Okay, this project took quite a long, long time, but it's finally done. It's finally done. A few months back when I was stuck in Mysore, I made an impulse decision to buy this bicycle. As you can see, it, it only has a single gear at the back and it's just a plain, simple bicycle. Despite that, uh, it was pretty good. I was able to ride around 25 to 30 kilometers in a session, uh, especially since it's quite flat uh, in Mysore. And then I came back to Bangalore. Here the terrain is very unforgiving and I definitely needed more gear options to make uh, the riding experience a lot better. So I decided to add more gears to my bicycle and make it a DIY project. Uh, this was this was something I was doing for the first time. This was not electronics. This was not coding. I was super excited. I did find a lot of gear kits on Amazon, which came with all the parts needed. But I wanted to use as many original Shimano parts as possible. So I bought all the different parts separately, making sure all of them were compatible with each other. After a lot of researching, I came to the realization that I needed four new parts to convert my single speed cycle into a geared cycle. The first thing would be a freewheel. I bought a six speed freewheel. Uh, this would give me five more options compared to my single speed cycle. I could not use cassettes since my cheap cycle came with a freewheel uh, pre-installed. Uh, cassettes are basically a newer version of freewheels. They are better in technology and overall new and they are better than freewheels. The second thing I would need is a derailleur. A derailleur is basically uh, the part which shifts the chain from one gear to another. And speaking of chain, I would need a new chain uh, since the old chain is not long enough to accommodate all the new gears. And the last part I would need is a shifter. A shifter is used to shift the chain from one gear to the other. Uh, the shifter basically has a cable which pulls on the derailleur and the derailleur changes the chain from one gear to another. So it was quite hard to find this part. I needed a six speed indexed shifter. The indexed ones are much better than the ones which you uh, rotate to change the gear. So I finally found one on, on, on Amazon and this was the last part I needed. Once all the parts were delivered, uh, it was time to get to work. I loosened the brakes and removed the axle nuts and I was able to free the wheel from uh, the hub or the dropouts. While I was at it, I also removed the old chain. Now I had to remove the old freewheel so that I can install the new six speed freewheel, but I did not have the tool to remove the single speed freewheel. I took it to a nearby cycle shop. Uh, they helped me remove the old freewheel. They also installed a new freewheel for me and gave the wheel. I came back home and I tried to fit the wheel back into the hub or the dropouts. And I realized that the hub spacing was not enough. The new, the, the new freewheel was about an inch thicker than the old freewheel and I had to widen, uh, had to widen the space between the dropouts. Basically, I had to widen the spacing between the dropouts by an inch accurately. I had come to know that it was relatively safe to bend the frame uh, if the frame was made of steel. I confirmed that my bicycle was made of steel by using a couple of magnets. I used the threaded rod, uh, some nuts and washers to widen the hub spacing. This process is called cold setting and it took quite a, uh, quite a few trials to get proper uh, spacing. Uh, I left it overnight to make sure that the new spacing is properly set. The next, the next morning I tried to put the wheel back into the frame and I realized that I had, I had two more big problems. The first thing was the axle was not long enough on the uh, freewheel side. Uh, once, especially once you accounted the thickness of the derailleur. There was barely any space to put on the axle nut and this was not going to work. 
The second problem was that the wheel was no more centered in the bicycle frame. Since, uh, the, uh, since the free wheel added some more thickness to the wheel itself, the wheel was now off center in the frame. Uh, this, would, this would cause a lot of problems. The brakes need to be adjusted and there was not a lot of room to play with. In the worst case, the wheel would go and touch the frame itself. I knew I could solve the off-center problem by adding some spacers and washer to the either side and somehow uh, making sure the wheel is not touching the frame. I, and the same story for the brakes, I could add uh, uh, more spacers uh, and reduce the, reduce the spacers on the other side and make the brakes work somehow. But to solve the axle problem, I either had to make the axle longer on the freewheel side or just entirely replace the axle with a new one which was longer. After scouring the internet for quite a while, I came to know that it is indeed possible to actually make the axle longer on one side by adjusting uh, the axle screws and opening up the cone nuts. Unfortunately, to do this, uh, you actually need a cone wrench. It's, it's actually much thinner than normal wrenches, but I did not have one. I decided to just go with it anyways and I somehow was able to open the cone wrenches and uh, adjusted the length of the axle on the freewheel side and moved it by about a centimeter. Uh, this gave the much needed uh, threads so that I can now uh, lock in the axle bolt. Before putting the wheel back in, I attached the derailleur to the frame with the screw uh, and the nut which came along with it. After using a lot of spacers and washers, I was able to fit the wheel in properly without touching the frame. Uh, there was very little space, but it, 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 it worked out. It was, working, uh, it was working well. It was quite a tight fit. The axle was barely long on, the, on both the sides. The axle wasn't even protruding out of the uh, axle nuts once I had tightened them fully. I was not happy with uh, the axle situation, but I decided to go along with it because replacing the axle was just a lot more work and I didn't want to spend more time and it seemed sturdy enough and I was gonna take that risk. Next it was time to put in the new chain. This is where I ran into another problem. Uh, while I was fiddling with the new chain I realized that it was not fitting the front chain ring properly. I realized that the new chain is thinner than the old one. And once I measured the thickness, the new chain was 7 millimeters in thickness and the old one was about 10 millimeters. So the teeth on the front chain ring were made for the thicker chain. Hence the new chain was not able to fit on the new chain ring. Uh, this problem totally caught me off guard and I was not really prepared for this. I actually spent a couple of days pondering about what uh, I could do to solve this problem. Uh, one of the solutions was very straightforward, just buy a new chain ring, new pedals and then fit it into the existing frame. But then I didn't want to spend any more money and there were not many good options. And so I just had to think of something else. I spent another day brooding over what I would do to solve this problem and then it, it hit me. I just had to reduce the thickness of the teeth uh, on the chain ring to make it work. So I grabbed my calipers, I measured the thickness of the teeth and also the gap uh, in the new chain. I realized that I had to reduce the thickness of every single teeth by about 0.5 millimeters to hopefully make this work. <laughs> I actually briefly thought about buying an angle grinder just to do this, but I couldn't justify that investment at this point of time. So I tried a file. You know, the good old file. I removed the chain ring and tried filing one of the teeth. After f uh, three to four minutes, uh, I, ha I had reduced the thickness by acceptable amount and it, and it fit the new chain properly. But again, I had to do this for 44 of the teeth on the chain ring. This was gonna take a long time. I put on some music and I started filing away. Initially, it was a very meditative experience and after a couple of hours, I was just, uh, it was ridiculous. I was super tired and, but I was finally done. I had, I had filed every single teeth on the new chain ring and the paint had come off and with all the bare metal exposed, 
the chain was fitting properly and it was great. Next, I cleaned the chain ring and all the exposed metal parts with uh, isopropyl alcohol to remove any grease or any metal powder there so that it doesn't get into the chain. Next, I gave it a coat of black paint so that the exposed metal doesn't rust. So I had finally solved the chain ring issue. I had a working chain ring. Next, I put the chain ring back into the frame and I installed the chain. It worked. It just, it just fit perfectly and I was damn happy at this point. <laughs> it was 5 a.m. by the time I had finished and it was quite an experience. But that was not the end. The next step was to attach the actual gear shifter to the handle of my cycle and then attach the gear cable and tune it. But I had another problem to solve. The gear shifter came with a cylindrical mounting point. Well, that makes sense. Most cycle handlebars are circular and yeah, it totally makes sense. But only my cycle came with a very weird oval thingy, oval tube thingy, which was not circular. So the circular mount was not gonna work. Uh, I knew about this potential problem and I had thought that I would somehow uh, find a way to mount it by 3D printing some parts. Luckily, I was able to remove the circular mounting bracket by just removing one of the screws from the shifter. So this would allow me to attach another adapter in there, uh, which I would design and 3D print. This is where I took the longest time and there was the biggest delay in finishing this project. Almost one and a half weeks. I was new to 3D modeling and most of my friends recommended uh, Fusion 360. Uh, there was a free or a personal version of it which was available uh, for use for students and I started uh, learning that. I had invested a couple of days into learning Fusion when Autodesk, the parent company of uh, Fusion 360, releases a blog post saying they were gonna remove a lot of features which were available in the free version. This kind of made me realize that I didn't want to put in too much time into learning a tool uh, where the parent company could nerf or remove features or make it only paid any time in the future. So, and I was not ready to spend $500 or $300 a year just to do 3D modeling. So at this point, I was like, no, I call it quits on Fusion 360 and I started looking for uh, an open source or a totally free uh, 3D CAD tool. I came across three interesting options. First one was Sol Spaces, the second was FreeCAD, and the third one was OpenSCAD. Sol Space seemed the simplest, so I started learning uh, Sol Space. Uh, there was a very good playlist uh, made by Eric. Thank you for those videos. Without those videos, I couldn't have learned this. They were very straightforward, and I was able to uh, get up to speed quite quickly. Initially, I wanted to make a perfect mount or match the shape of the handlebar, but it kept getting too complex for my first time designing. So I decided to make something a little more simpler. Taking inspiration from how CPU coolers mount to motherboard, I decided to make a system where there is a bottom plate and a top plate and they would be just screwed in uh, with bolts. So I designed three parts in total. The first small part would just go and plug into the shifter itself. And then the bottom plate would screw into the smaller part with a bolt, which came with the shifter. And then there would be a top plate, which would screw in from the top with the bottom plate. After a lot of trial and error, I finalized on a design and started designing it in sol sol spaces. At the end, it was not perfect, but I was quite happy with the design. I printed the parts with ABS on my Ender 5, since it makes more sense for an outdoor um, functional part, and it's a lot more durable than PLA. The printed parts came out quite well, and I was quite happy with the result. I did need to sand a couple of pieces here and there, but then it was quite seamless. I was uh, very happy with how they printed out. I put all the parts together and I tried mounting it to the handlebar. Uh, due to a design error, I was not able to use screws. I had to use zip ties instead and I did a test fit and it looked quite fine. Zip ties actually worked quite well. 
I was able to shift without the whole thing moving around too much. It wasn't perfect, it wasn't like proper screws and nuts, uh, but it did the job and it allowed me to move ahead with the project and complete it. I gave all the parts a coat of black paint so that they blended in with the rest of the bicycle. Before attaching it to the handlebar, I used some leftover badminton grip and wrapped it around the handlebar so that there is a little bit of cushion between the two hard surfaces meeting. I cut the gear cable housing to appropriate length and then installed it on to the gear cable which came pre-installed with the shifter. Next I took the gear cable and I uh, screwed it into the derailleur and making sure uh, it was tight enough. Uh, with, the, with the help of this video from Park Tools, I was able to adjust and tune the rear derailleur uh, with the shifter properly. Uh, without that video, it would, have, it would have taken a lot more time. So thanks to Calvin from Park Tools. Uh, next, I adjusted the brakes to work with an off-center wheel. I had to add extra spacers on one of the sides and remove spacers from the other side and uh, got it to work with an off-center wheel, which, which also took quite a while but worked out somehow. At this point, I lubricated the whole new drivetrain with some uh, silicone lubricant I had lying around, uh, cleaned all the brakes and the chain, and I was pretty much done. The next morning, I went out for a test ride. I even carried this pocket tool uh, for emergencies. I was hoping the rear wheel wouldn't come flying off the frame. Fortunately, everything worked almost perfectly. There was a bit of a problem when, when shifting from the sixth gear to the fifth gear, uh, but other than that, it was really great. Uh, I didn't have any problems riding it around, shifting, or there was no problem even from the rear uh, axle. After coming back home, I tuned the derailleur uh, once again, making sure it works properly between the fifth and sixth gear, uh, cleaned the chain and lubricated it a little more. And at this point, it was basically perfect, uh, shifting between all the gears seamlessly. And it was finally done. Um, <laughs> it was finally done. After that, I've gone out for a few more rides and things have been great. Now I mostly use the top four gears while riding and it's been a much better experience. Overall, it's, it's been great and I'm very happy uh, about how this project turned out and I'm, I'm now confident about going for longer rides. And now I have this unique bicycle which is ready for further modifications. Yes, uh, I have some more plans of adding some more things to this bicycle, so stay tuned and subscribe to the channel. This project took quite a while to finish and I learned a lot about the world of bicycles and the different standards and the companies. Uh, just a whole lot of knowledge growth happened in this last few weeks. Uh, I got to learn 3D modeling, which I've been wanting to do since a long time, and I think it's quite a handy skill. Uh, anyways, we are at the end of this video. I'll leave all the parts and the resources I mentioned about in the video description along with the YouTube channels. Feel free to ask any questions if you have, uh, or if you have any suggestions or anything I could have done better. Yeah, since you have made it so far, Here's a customary donut for you and see you guys in the next one.